Pakistan is a nuclear-armed nation on a collision course with extremism and economic disaster. Can it be stopped? Well, not by America, that's for sure. Since 1998, Pakistan has had the bomb. And like any rational country, it sees those capabilities as strategic deterrent. But that came at a cost, significantly impacting their international standing and ability to get aid. Meanwhile, Iran's nuclear program continues to face global opposition because it's not a signatory to the Non-Proliferation Treaty. It's a long story that goes back decades, but the rivalry between Israel and Iran is one of the most dangerous in the world. And Pakistan has wisely stayed out of it, focusing instead on its own problems. Pakistan has fought a long and bloody battle against extremists. And although attacks are down 80% since 2001, there's still a lot of work to do, especially against sectarian violence, targeting minority communities. The government's commitment to the protection of all citizens, regardless of their faith, is commendable. And operations against extremist groups, including those backed by foreign powers, demonstrate that commitment. Pakistan's economic crisis, however, is a different story altogether. With a $125 billion debt and energy shortages, the country is facing a major crisis. That's why Islamabad has been trying to improve ties with the Gulf states. With some success, they're also betting big on their relationship with China and trying to rebalance their ties with Iran. Pakistan is home to 15-20% to Shia Muslims, many of whom are successful businessmen and politicians. Despite threats from banned groups like ISIS and Al-Qaeda, they're protected under Pakistan's constitution. That's both a strength and a responsibility for the country's unity. So what's the takeaway here? Pakistan's nuclear arsenal is a reality that we must accept. Its economic and security challenges are what should be prioritized, not taking sides in someone else's war.